I don't know how to start stuff, okay? So yeah, uh, the last video, inexplicably, uh, yeah, oh boy, this, this be doing numbers. <laughs> so, I figured, frick it, let's just roll that momentum forwards. What's more lazy and generic content than a room tour video? A tier list video! I don't- I don't have any other way of introducing it. Let, let's go do it. Okay, hopefully this doesn't take too long, because, uh, I don't know how much time I have left on my phone, or my computer, but we're gonna do both at the same time. So, uh, paint.net, frig it later, uh, oh gosh, it's gonna be such a pain to, like, edit all of this. I don't care, I'll just speed it all up and leave it at that. Okay, it's done. Graphic de graphic design is my passion. <laughs> Generally, I'm quite negative. I'm quite a negative person, I guess. So, um, the the criteria is basically just like, does do I still love it after a lot of time playing it? Does it feel like I just kind of haven't spent much time with it, but kind of want to? Or is it, nah, I've tried it, but it's, uh, eh, I don't really feel any motivation to keep playing. Or was it, did I try it and does it suck? So is it Osu? <laughs> I'm not actually gonna put the cut, 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 the, and then finally, just, just, just bad. Just, it's not good at all. I don't actually know if there's any games I've played that would fall into that tier, but let, let's, let's get going. So, may as well start off with the Bibani games because that's an easy place to start. Uh, uh, Beat Mania, five key. That's technically the first one, the le legit, the first, the first ever one. I don't count per rap the rapper. So yeah, Beat Mania, first rhythm game, sort of. So. Growing Pains. Going back to it, it's like, it's kind of a novelty, but actually meaning it, I can't be bothered. Uh, I guess that means uh, a Cita. So, DDR, we're gonna split uh, playing at arcades versus playing on like home keyboard, whatever. So, DDR um, in arcades, it's the one I've been playing for the longest uh, in terms of arcade games. But honestly, it feels like, it feels like I've barely scratched the surface with it. It feels like I've played like maybe 30%, um, because most of the mixes apart from Ace, I don't actually know them very well, because guess what, I, we didn't get them. <laughs> most X cabs have been upgraded to X2, most X2 cabs have been scrapped because they were terrible over here, X3 2013-2014 didn't come out, Ace20 and Ace20 Plus are stuck at one location, and uh, yeah, I just haven't played much of anything except Ace, but Ace is good, it's got a good song list, but uh, in terms of like gameplay, I don't think DDR is actually, like, that fun. Um, every time I play it, it's like, sometimes I'm at an arcade, like, and I'm like, okay, let's give DDR a go. And it's just less fun each time, because the complicated patterns, it's all crossovers. And I don't like crossovers, the way the crossovers work. It just, I can't feel it out. It's a me thing. I just need to, like, get good, I guess, and learn it, but... I kind of can't be I can't be bothered to because guess what there's other games I'd rather play like pump it up let's get let's do that one now so pump it up is basically I prefer it to DDR I think the layout just makes for more interesting charts because they're less limited and also Andimero it's weird the game feels like 50 steps back from DDR in some areas but then a bunch of steps ahead in others like the charting so much more interesting than modern DDR some features are really neat like as you use custom step and then there's no rival feature, and the online's kind of boring. And it's like, it's weird, but I kind of like it, and I do want to play it more. So, uh, B, B tier. Uh, next up, uh, pop and music. Uh, I've barely spent any time with this game. It's basically just, uh, occasionally, I'll go give it a go. I've gone to the point now where I've learnt the layout, and I'm in, like... Early, like, 29 to 32. That's about where I play. I don't actually play the game much, but, like, I can't just drop... I, it feels like I never picked it up, but I never dropped it. I still occasionally play it when I'm at arcades, and it's kind of neat. I can't hate it. The song list is... It feels like I haven't scratched the surface with it, but at the same time, it's not a game I want to spend a lot of time with, so C tier. Okay, 2DX. This game... This... <laughs> It's a freaking game, man. Um, in terms of playing at home, honestly, kind of eh? Like, um, playing on Infinitas, I made the mistake of getting a uh, PS2 controller because, yeah, they're cheap and they work fine on PS2. But when I'm playing 
on PC, the input lag is terrible. The timing of it just doesn't work out, so I can't really get into it on PC, which sucks. Uh, sure, BMS is a bit better, they have some stuff to account for it, but yeah, I just don't find it very fun on PC. But then when I go to the arcade, it's really fun, and I enjoy it, and I keep playing it, and I have been playing it pretty much every time I go to, to any arcade that has it. Weird. Uh, I, I guess... Uh, B tier? Yeah, I'd say it's about B tier. Uh, the next B money game, I guess, it would be uh, UB. This one came out in like 2009, so it's a bit skipping a bit forwards, but uh, nothing really came out during the, the time in between. Uh, this game, I, for <laughs> some reason, I just immediately clicked with me. It's just really fun, and I like it, and it's really fun. To, it, it's really fun to play, and so I, yeah, A tier. Sure, when it gets to like the really high level, like level 9s and above, it gets really dense and I can't read it well, but I think it's something I will improve on, it's something I want to improve on. Pretty much every time I go to any arcade, I go play it, because I really want to get on those leaderboards for um, having the most ability, so like, yeah, it's a game I really like and I want to get keep playing get better at. Reflect Beat. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is a weird game, because it's legit just a touchscreen. There is no, it's there's no special input method, which is weird for an arcade game for it to be just touchscreen, and the game didn't do poorly. Like it got support for a while, it's just kind of a very weird game. Uh, it's kind a lot of people I think find it hard to read, which is fair. I think I find it hard to read. I haven't played it enough to really find out, so you'd assume it'd be D tier, but now nah, I'm at the point where I occasionally play it, just not enough. So. Uh, C tier. We're hopping all over the place now. While we're in the modern stuff, we may as well go on to save his things. Uh, my my, I, d I, d I don't like my my, which is, it's weird. My my from like level seven to level nine is like, all right, low level stuff. It's pretty fun, and I can get into it. It's almost like kind of reminds me of you know Beat Saber, U Beat, etc. But then when you get to the high levels, it's just all. Uh, slide notes, you know, the touchscreen stuff, and I don't like it. My My is fun when it's the buttons, but the charting just doesn't really account for it. I guess it's that I want it to sort of follow, like, the charting style of, like, streams, but it's almost exclusively jumps, and I freaking hate reading, like, jumps and jacks and that kind of stuff, so it doesn't really jive with me, because the high-level charts just look like jumps, jumps, slides, slides, it just doesn't... It's not something I like, and so I kind of just don't play it as much, so, uh... Honestly, I guess I'll have to give it D tier. Mm. Chun of them. This is uh, Sega's other one. Of, Sega has three big room games: uh, Mai Mai, Chun of them, and Ongeki. And Chun of them's the one I think I like the most. It's the charts are really well made. It's got lots of streamy stuff that I like, and even the stuff that I dislike, where it's like jumps that are hard to read, they're honestly not as bad as uh, other things I don't like. So honestly, I guess I'd give it A, a tier? Mm. Nah, I'd, I'd put it more into B tier. Even then, I haven't played it much recently. I need to play it more. The last one we have uh, of Sega stuff is Ongeki. This is very recent, and it's like a hybrid of a rhythm game, a bullet hell, and a gacha game. Um, you press buttons like it's a rhythm game, but then you have this analog s s stick? It's, it's weird that you sort of move the char characters around with, but like, they don't go too far into the bullet hell elements, which is a real shame. And the uh, gacha stuff is like, it's there, it's pervasive, I guess. It's stylized as a gacha game, but then the only cab in the UK doesn't have the card printer. I think I'd get much more into the gacha if I had, if I could like, get these characters and then print off their cards, but there's no card printer. So for me, it's just a pretty neat game, I guess. The song list in uh, both Chinivam and Ongeki is great, and Ongeki's good because you can, if you're like, say, at a location waiting for a tournament, and you want to pass the time but not be de uh, dedicated, Ongeki's really good because you can uh, card in and then play like one or two songs and then quit. You don't have to, you know, play for an entire set. I really like that about it, but at the same time, it's, I don't know, I tried one high level chart and it's just... I don't read it very well. It's not very easy to read, but then at a lower level, it's... <laughs> so, uh, I guess C tier? Yeah, I guess C tier. Next up, uh, Sound Voltex. I actually have been getting into this game quite a bit recently. Um, 
over the holidays I got finally got like a vertical monitor stand. So I was just like, frick it, let's just get the let's just get uh the subscription to Sam Voltex. Because yeah, all of Konami's games, you don't just buy them at home now. You have to subscribe to them for ten pounds a month, which is a lot. But uh yeah, Sam Voltex, it's really it's really fun. I I for the longest time it was just kind of a C tier whatever kind of game. But now that I've gotten into it at home and really had time to play it. I really jive with it. I think the charting's really fun. It's just a good balance of different things. And I think the gimmick isn't annoying, which is good for a rhythm game. Honestly, I guess A tier? Mm. Now nah, I'd say probably B tier. It's the one game I want to play a lot more of and get better at. But at the same time, maybe at home. It's not as fun in the arcades, I find. Mm. Maybe I just haven't played it enough. Okay, so Dance Rush, I haven't played this much, mainly because as of recording this, uh, only cabinets in the UK are all up north. So yeah, I've only been able to play it once, uh, but it's freaking great, man. It's genuinely so, so damn, so damn good. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's really good. <laughs> I just really like it, but it's not a traditional rhythm game. You, you're not going to focus on just hitting notes and whatever. It's a freestyle focused game, which is really refreshing because the last freestyle focused games were, I guess, 20 years ago. And even then, they're not as good for freestyling on as Dance Rush. Dance Rush is like dance. Everything else is like, I guess if you want to, you can. But like, we still got like tech play and stuff. Dance Rush is like, no, you're going to dance, sucker. And I really like that. I think it's a really good game. Uh... I guess S tier, honestly. The last arcade game is Wacker. This is done by Hardcore Tenno C, at least the sound is, which is really neat because like that kind of hardcore stuff is really good for these games. And all the artists, you know, it's like, yeah, they're doing the sound. So it's really good. I think it's honestly the most visually striking game in arcades at the moment, probably alongside like Dance Rush and a few others, maybe. It's good like that. In terms of gameplay, it's okay. I wouldn't say it's amazing, but... um pretty fun. It's a pretty good casual game. It's a good beginner game, I guess. Honestly, I want to play it more because it's so fun, even if it's not the most demanding. A tier, I guess. I ranked Wacker higher than freaking Sound Vortex. What the frick is this tier list? Got some water. Let's keep doing this. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot a few other arcade games now that I think about it. So Project Diva, they have a home version and an arcade version and they're like different gameplay. But then they just put the arcade gameplay in the new home versions, and eh, I think playing something like Mega Mix on Switch, it's pretty fun, but I think the charting just... Eh, it's a fun casual game, but the higher it gets, the less fun I find it. And in arcade, it's even worse because uh, the layout is super weird. You know, if it was like a diamond, I think I'd jive with it more maybe? And like some of the home controllers for like F or X, they were diamond shapes, but mm, I mean, the game's basically dead in arcades now. Uh, Sega stopped really adding new songs to it, and most of the home versions are just getting songs that were added to the arcade version ages ago. Uh, if It's not that Vocaloid's dead, it's just that Vocaloid stuff is being done in the other games. So yeah, Project Diva Arcade, honestly, D tier? I like Project Diva, it was my first rhythm game. I got into it arguably before I got back into DDR, um, but eh, it's just not as, it just doesn't scale up for me. As I said, I consider the home version to be different in terms of gameplay to the arcade version. They're kind of different games, not entirely different, they're just very similar yet slightly different games, so I'd rank them separately. So uh, C tier, honestly, it still doesn't scale up too well just now. Oh, I'm playing on a PS Vita and it's like really hard to play at high levels on this. And lastly, I forgot Musica because like, haha, dead game. Um, but no, <laughs> it's, this game was launched and nobody liked it at launch, I think. But then they made like this big patch that made the game significantly better. And at that point, everyone had already moved on. And then this was when Konami was just killing games off left and right. And so I guess they were like, frick it, we're going to kill off Musica now. Which sucks, because the game has potential. When I was at Arcade Warehouse Lincoln, played the game quite a bit. Because it's a perfectly sound rhythm game. It honestly, yeah, has a lot of potential. And I mean, there is that fan continuation of it. I haven't played it though. I haven't played Musica in ages, because there's always been other games I'd rather play it whenever I'm at the arcade. So... 
Uh, I guess I put it in C tier. A lot of stuff in C tier. Oh yeah, that's right, Nostalgia. This isn't the game based off of Sega's uh, Sonic the Hedgehog design philosophies for the past 15 years. Ha ha, funny joke. Um, no, it's basically a piano kind of game. It's not too dissimilar to, say, uh, Chinovim, but it's got like this fun classical piano theming. That's kind of neat. I can't be bothered to play it anymore. Like, yeah, it's fine, but I guess... It's just kind of whatever for me. Frick, man, I keep forgetting all the arcade games. Yeah, Groove Coaster. I don't like it too much. It's kind of whatever. The main thing is there's no assist clap. On the Switch version, when you press a button, it makes a noise, and it's easier to time things like that. In the arcade, half the songs are like MIDI versions, and when you press a button, Something happens when you're not pressing a note, but then when you press a note, it isn't, so it's harder to time. So yeah, I didn't get into it much. Groove Coaster on Steam, uh, bad, bad tier. That's like the worst one that I freaking I don't like that one. Uh, <laughs> because it has all the problems of the arcade version, and then they just stopped supporting it with new songs, and it also just doesn't play well. It just doesn't feel good. So uh, yeah, bad tier. Okay, for, for realsies this time, uh, I think this is the last arcade game. Uh, Taikono Tatsujin, um, the name that for some reason I find relatively easy to pronounce, yet every other person I know, uh, is just like, what word are you saying, magic man? But yeah, um, this game is another one of those ones where I used to really like, it's kind of like Project Diva. When I was, uh, younger, getting into rhythm games, this was really neat, uh, but now it's like, oh, eh, the Switch version just doesn't have a good song list. A lot of it is licenses I couldn't care for and original songs that are kind of okay, and why is there a section dedicated to classical pieces? <laughs> There's basically no Toho songs, or Vocaloid, in a rhythm game. <laughs> Especially for a Japanese rhythm game, it's like, you gotta have something to make up for, and sure, the game music's pretty good, and the original songs are not half bad, but it's just not enough to make up for it, so whenever I play on Switch, I have fun, for a bit and then run out of songs to play, and I don't want to buy DLC packs to make up for it. In the arcade it doesn't have that problem, the song list is arguably the biggest of any rhythm game because Taiko does really well in Japan, and now it's even in like Southeast Asia, all those places, well, that's neat. I can't get into playing it at high levels. As soon as it's like the uh, really clustered together notes, I just can't do it. I found with uh, Zen Zen Zen's, with that song, I couldn't play it, but then when I watched a video, like did it on autoplay, figured out how it's meant to sound, and then did it, it's easier. You've really got to play it by ear, but reading it's absolute pain, especially since it scrolls horizontally. I don't like horizontal scroll in rhythm games. So, uh, I guess C tier. I'm running out of space on C tier. Give me, give me a second. Okay, we're good. Um, that's all the arcade games I can think of. For real this time, I don't think there's any more. Frick man, give me a second. Rhythm Heaven doesn't count as arcade games, shut up. Yeah, that's all on the arcade side, so I'm gonna go on to the uh, home side, which is gonna be a lot less, because I, I play less things at home. Okay, so first off, DJ Max Respect. Uh, Respect V. Uh, honestly, freaking love that game. Uh, it's really good, especially since it's like, it feels modern. It's not like every other arcade game, where it feels kind of like stuck five, ten years in the past, but trying to look cool. No, this game just looks cool and does a good job of it. So... Yeah, really, real good stuff. I really like it. It's really cool. I want to play it more. The online matching, especially, is like a really good feature that basically no other game has. Well, rather, other games have online matching. This is the only one with an online rank ladder. And I really like that. It gives you incentive to play because, you know, the song list, I don't really know most of it. But it's like, I don't care because I can jive with it if I'm playing in an online rank because I just want to play and win. So it's honestly really good. I really like it. I've barely played it though. At this point, I basically only played the four key mode, and <laughs> it's really simplistic, just DFJK. I really need to like play more, get more into it, get a controller or something. I don't know. But yeah, honestly, uh, I guess A tier, honestly. I, I really like it. I mentioned earlier that I consider home and arcade DDR to be two separate things, and honestly, kind of. Playing at home on Step Mania, very different, especially if you use DFJK layout. I don't, I use the arrow keys, but it still feels very different to play, so I'd honestly consider it a separate game that I enjoy a lot more. It's a very fun to just sort of sit down and play casually, you know. You can read, I can play up like level 18s in DDR, or most, or like, I don't know, 
on the Eurobeast's Fantastic Stamina pack, I'm at like, I think I can play up to about level 12 before I get wrist cramps. And yeah, I really like it. I think it's really fun. So A tier, honestly, I play it a lot and I still, I still play it to this day. It's really fun. Okay, here's the, here's the part for the thumbnail. There's a bunch of crows going on. Uh, Osu, Osu, Os, Osu, Osu, Os, I don't freaking know how to pronounce it. I don't play this game. <laughs> uh, honestly, I, when I first played it, I absolutely hated it because I was used to Project Eva and I just didn't get it. And even now, uh, I did try and get into it. I got to a very basic level of just, okay, I get it. Uh, I'm playing with a drawing tablet, right? And it's just, and for me, it's like just so different to every other rhythm game out there that if you've never played anything else, cool. It's You've got a great game to get into. But if you've already played something else, you're going to have to take a lot of time to adjust to it. And it's just not worth it for me because, yeah, it has a lot of good user gen stuff. You know what also does? Step Mania. Beat Saber. I can't think of anything else, but there probably is other stuff. Um, you know, there's other good games with user gen stuff that I'd rather be spending time with rather than, you know, adjusting to Ossie's layout. And even then, eh, it's just not really my kind of thing. It's a great game. Honestly, if you play it and you're good at it, more power to you, but I didn't get into it, so I guess D tier. <laughs> Pump It Up M, the mobile version. I've actually spent way more time on the console version than the uh, arcade version, because I, I don't know, I, it's easy to play. Um, I just, you know, in, frequently in school when I had like a free minute, I just, you know, bust it out with my wired headphones, play a few songs, and eventually I went from like, S7 to S15 to now I'm at like I can play S20s. That's pretty freaking neat. I'm still stuck around S14s on the arcade, so yeah, it's really good. And I've been enjoying it for a while now, and I probably won't stop playing it casually for a for a decent amount. Only problem is, uh, I now use Bluetooth headphones. I know, boo. Um, so <laughs> I just play it a lot less. But still, when I do play it, really fun, really good game. Oh no, I mentioned mobile games. Now it's time for the obligatory acknowledgement of games I don't play. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of games on phone. Probably really good. I just haven't played them. Uh, immediately off the top of my head. Archaea. Cytus. I don't know many others, but there's probably a bunch more. I'll put them on screen. Um, but yeah. I don't play mobile games much. I don't play games on my phone much. Uh, I think the game I have the most time on on my phone is Solitaire. I just play stuff on my phone to pass the time when I don't feel like reading on it. So, yeah, playing rhythm games on it with Bluetooth headphones just never been particularly appealing for me. Uh, so, yeah, I don't have much experience, but at the very least I want to acknowledge, yes, there are other rhythm games on phone. And there's also Rhythm Gacha games, uh, a boot of that. I've heard that it's like a completely different culture. Um, but yeah, they they do exist. There's that um, Hatsune Miku one that came out recently. I've seen people talk about that, I think. But um. the only other one that I've spent any kind of time with is uh, Seven's Code. This was done by Naoki Maeda, the guy who did, you know, most of the classic DDR songs. That's kind of neat. The, it looks really nice. It's really nice and flashy. The story's neat. Uh, but, uh, I, I think I broke my phone and forgot to tie the purchase to an account. So now I had to have to rebuy it all again. And it's like, sure, it's cheap. Cool. But the gameplay is just discount Chunivum, which is what most mobile rhythm games end up being. And I like Chunivum, but I like it because I'm playing it at, on an arcade cab with a dedicated control panel. Playing with my thumbs on a phone just doesn't really, it doesn't do anything for me. Song list is kind of neat, I guess, but... Uh, so I guess, yeah, D tier. Muse Dash. This one is actually on phones as well as Steam, but I've only got the Steam version. It's pretty neat. Visually, I'd say it's I, it's definitely above a lot of uh, arcade games. Like, really put a lot, a lot of effort into the visuals. Looks really nice, especially with that strong art style. Uh, gameplay, people can compare it to Taiko, but eh... It's pretty neat. I do kind of enjoy it for a time, but I think the problem is I just couldn't find a good way to play it. Like, it's horizontal scroll with two lanes that are vertical. How am I supposed to map that? DFJK would be a bit weird, but then something like RFUJ would be weird. Uh, I just never found a good layout, especially because it's designed for a controller with a D-pad and buttons. That'd be cool. You want to know the only controller I have that I can use for PC games? 
It's called a steam controller. <laughs> Playing with an analog stick was fine for a little bit, but it's just not, it makes me not want to play it. Those pros are going nuts. But yeah, Muse Dash, I'd put it in C tier. Dang good game. Honestly, devs did a lot of good work on it. And speaking of which, uh, unbeatable. This game's technically not out yet, uh, but I mean, there's a demo, unbeatable white label. Honestly, really cool stuff. Uh, gameplay is similar to Muse Dash, but they added like left and right, uh, which it kind of does automatically. It's pretty neat. It took me a little bit to adjust, but once you get used to it, again, it's pretty fun. It's, I'd say, slightly better than Muse Dash. It's entirely style over substance, but that art style, man, it looks freaking great. Um, so I'd say, yeah, great game. And again, it's it's free. Just check it out. <laughs> Even after all of that praise, still see it. I, I don't feel like playing it much more, to be honest, um, because there's only so many songs in it, and it's it's not even out yet. <laughs> And yeah, the layout problems from the other, uh, from Muse Dash still applies. And uh, one game that's kind of almost connected to Unbeatable, I guess, that I may as well give an honourable mention, technically doesn't count, but whatever, I'm going to include it here. Uh, Noise, with a S, Z, whatever. Um, <laughs> developed by uh, the team behind Pump It Up Infinity. Actually has a lot of songs crossing over from that, and a few other kind of neat deep cuts, like Neon FM, stuff from that, that's neat. Um, it's... A hybrid between a rhythm game and a shoot 'em up, but unlike Ongeki, where the bullet hell is like 20% and the rhythm game is 80%, in Noise, the bullet hell is 80% and it just has sort of rhythm game elements. Um, but it's really fun. Even as someone who's not really played many bullet hells, it, it I enjoy it. I thought it was good. I thought it was fun. I played through the story mode absolute hell, but at the same time, pretty good. That's right, because in addition to being a bullet hell and a rhythm game, it's also a visual novel. There's a proper story there. Pretty fun. But I will have to get back to it eventually because they're working on a sequel that's actually more like the rhythm game is bumped up from like 20% to more like 40, I'd say. And uh, that's going to be on the phones, which is going to be interesting. But I'm honestly really looking forward to it because uh, they did a prequel VN series to this one. And that was pretty neat. I read that. That was neat. And uh, <laughs> can you tell? You'd think I would like it, wouldn't you? But yeah. Um, Honestly, that looks really neat. I'm really looking forward to it. And so, yeah, that, that's really neat. I guess I wanted to shout that out quickly. I won't put it on the tier list because it's not a rip. Noise isn't a rhythm game. It's a, sh it's a bullet hell, but at least worth shouting out, I guess. And finally, uh, the, the one I've spent a lot of time on, the one I really freaking like, and the one that I'd... I, I don't know. Would I say it's freaking amazing? I, I guess I would. Um, Beat Saber. This is a VR rhythm game, the only one that I've actually enjoyed. I tried Hatsune Miku VR, uh, bad tier. That one freaking st- I'm gonna, I'm gonna add that quickly. That game is basically just an excuse to be able to watch uh, a Hatsune Miku model dance around in VR, which, if you want to do that, I don't know, go- I think one of the Project Eva games had a mode like that on PS4, and also there's 360 YouTube videos. There's a lot of better things. The rhythm game portion of it sucks. It's just hold this thing here. Okay, good. There's just no timing. It's not. It's not good. But um, Beat Saber, uh, the main VR rhythm game, the only one that really I've played properly. Freaking great. Like, um, honestly, how do I even explain it? The way it's charted is so fun because you're moving around a lot. It's honestly the kind of movement I enjoy in rhythm games. It's again what I like about Dance Rush. Um, sort of. But in something like DDR or Pump, you know, you're holding onto the bar, you're trying to minimize your movement. In Beat Saber, yeah, that's kind of a thing, but in lower level charts, you can just get away with swinging around and just having fun, which I really like. And in high level charts, you just feel cool. Also, user gen stuff. Step Mania kind of has it, you know, Step Mania user gen died 10 years ago. Sure, it's fun going back, getting that hit of early, you know, late 2000s uh, stuff, but Beat Saber, still active. It Assuming you get over the initial hurdle of learning the game, which is pretty tricky since a lot of user gen stuff is hard, expert, expert plus. But once you get to that level, it's so fun. It's such a good game. I'd honestly say, I don't know if it's the one I spent the most time on. I spent a lot of time with it, especially for a VR game. I, hard recommend. Honestly, great game. I guess S tier? I, think, I do really like it. And it's really good. <laughs> but uh, it gets frustrating. When you get to like really hard expert plus user gen stuff it just kind of got to a pain uh where it's just i don't want to do this there are certain charts where it's just like huh 
Why? Um, it's also because you also get very... It's easy to get rusty at this game. If you stop playing for even like a week, then you go back to it, you're going to be having a lot tougher time playing hard stuff. And for me, I go back to it sometimes and it's just like, oh, I do, I'm not good at this anymore. I don't really want to play this. Same problem with most of the dance games. But yeah, uh, Beat Saber, great game, would recommend. And with that, I guess that's it. That's the entire tier list. Hi, I'm stupid. I can't believe it. I, I, I was like, yes, let's put Osu in D tier. That's a good fun though, material. I forgot to talk about Friday Night Funkin'. What do you want me to say? I'm like a total boomer when it comes to like what the kids are into with rhythm games. I know someone in school who's like really into it. They're year eight. I'm in year 11. Uh, so yeah, I can't really comment on it because I haven't played it. Uh, I don't like the anti-mashing. Um, but like the modding scene, it's really cool. Everyone's really creative. That's neat. It's all good. You kids, you got, you got good stuff. You're really, really lucky. I've never played it, and I don't know when I will, but hey, I, I guess I should mention it? But yeah, that's that's the entire tier list. That's everything we've got there. Uh, I, I'm pretty happy with it. I don't know how many of these takes are controversial. I haven't looked at many Rhythm Game tier lists. I think I saw one on Twitter that also put Dance Rush and S tier, and I've seen Tokaku's um, Rhythm Game tier list video. It's the one that inspired this, because hey, why actually be original? Uh, if you can't think of any ideas, just do something that someone else has done. I like to think that at the very least my opinions are different enough and my game selection is different enough to the point where this is worth watching. Hopefully. Um, but yeah, it's like this kind of gives you an idea of the kind of rhythm games I like, I guess. I was also pr pretty friggin' harsh with it, I'd say. Like, out of all of these games, I'd say I honestly, most of them I have had fun with. It's like, are they good? Do I like them? Or do I really like them? You know? Uh, because pretty much every game on this list, except like bad tier, people freaking like, people play, and that's that's good. It doesn't really matter <laughs> what I think of them, because most of the games where I put them in like D tier or C tier, I put them there because I haven't played them much. I think, you know, if I got into Mai Mai, learnt the charting, and learnt how to play it, I'd freaking love that game. Same with Taiko, same with uh, Ghidorah, probably, you know, DDR, all of that. These are all really cool games, and honestly, who cares um, which one's quote-unquote good or not? Uh, I've legit just invalidated this entire video, but it's too late now. You've watched through to the end. Ha ha. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to do for the end screen, though. This was a terrible idea. Here's some other videos. Go watch them.